This video is brought to you by Sailrite. By using a split foam pipe insulation, we're going to make rail and lifeline cushions. Slit foam insulation comes in all kinds of styles and is very inexpensive. Cover it with umbrella, and you've got a perfect rail and lifeline cushion. Angela's taking umbrella fabric and creating a straight edge with the soapstone pencil. Then she cuts it with the Sailrite Edge Hot Knife. After determining the correct size of foam insulation, usually you go by the inside diameter, lay it on top of the umbrella fabric and curl the umbrella fabric around to determine the approximate size of the finished cover. Notice here, the umbrella fabric is wrapped around the foam, but not too tightly, and that's where she marked the underside of the fabric. Now, we'll add one and a quarter inches from that mark. So we'll mark up one and a quarter inches from that mark, and that will be used for a hem. We'll transfer that measurement to a few spots on our fabric, and then use a straight edge and strike a line with a soapstone pencil. We're using a 46 inch width fabric and we need two panels for the length of our lifeline. So we're going to cut a second strip of equal size. We're going to use the Sailrite Edge Hot Knife to cut the fabric and that seals the edge of the fabric so it does not unravel. We'll lay the fabric on top of each other so the outside surfaces are facing each other. It doesn't matter what side is used on a umbrella marine grade fabric, both sides are acceptable. Then we'll place a row of straight stitches approximately a half inch from the raw edges of the fabric, sewing them together. Unfold the fabric and we'll create a top stitch here. This is a semi-flat failed seam. Throughout this video we'll be using the Sailrite 111 sewing machine with the MCSCR power system. Phenomenal sewing machine and we're also using Tanara thread. Though using a V69 or V92 polyester thread will work just as well and is not quite as expensive. The polyester thread is UV resistant where Tanara or Helios is totally UV resistant. We'll place the split foam insulation for pipe on top of our fabric blank to determine how long to cut the fabric blank. We want three inches of excess material on each end, so we're marking it with the soapstone pencil. Next, we'll crease the fabric at that mark and we'll use the Sailrite Edge Hot Knife to cut the fabric at that location on the crease. We'll follow that same procedure for the other end as well. Then we're going to use double sided seam stick for canvas and baste along the long side. This will create a half inch hem. Peel off the transfer paper revealing the glue and then fold the half inch hem all along the length. Sumbrella marine grade fabric is 100% solution dyed acrylic. It's extremely fade resistant, water resistant, and stain resistant. And obviously a lot of glues do not stick well to it. Even using basting tape sometimes won't stick well. So sometimes we use a putty knife to help to crease the fabric so the basting tape holds better. On the two ends we'll create a one and a half inch fold, or a single hem here. We'll crease the fabric at that location. We'll cut out a small triangle at the corner here using the hot knife and notice we're cutting on top of a metal ruler to prevent damage to the table top. You can also cut on top of glass. Cutting this triangle out will give a more finished look when we create that single hem with the leech line on both ends. We'll do that to both sides. If you do not have a professional hot knife like this you could use a soldering gun or wood burning tool. Now Angela will use that soapstone pencil and mark where the fold stops on both ends. Then she'll place double sided tape right on top of that half inch hem we created earlier. Now we'll use a 5 8 inch velcro, this is a loop velcro, and we'll place it right on top of that double sided tape very close to the folded edge of the fabric. Angela will cut the velcro right at that mark that indicates where the fold will begin. Now she takes it to the Sarite 111 sewing machine and sews a straight stitch. It's a good idea to sew a stitch length of approximately 6 millimeters or longer. 
and she'll sew it all the way down the length of the fabric. You should notice that Angela reverses the sewing machine every time she begins a stitch approximately an inch, and then when she ends a stitch, she also reverses approximately an inch to lock her stitch in place. And now she's placing a second row of stitches along the top edge, securing that Velcro and also the hem at the same time. Now you can see sort of how this is going to work. We're going to fold it over and secure it to another strip of Velcro on the other side. The other side does not have a hem. First, before we do that, we're going to mark the, where the Velcro should start on the other end as well. And notice that we're working on the outside surface here. So here we're going to apply the Velcro to the outside surface using the double-sided tape again. This is a 5 8 inch hook Velcro. So the hook Velcro will make contact with the loop Velcro that was sewn down previously. And we'll sew along both edges of this 5 8 inch Velcro as well. It is not uncommon when sewing on top of Velcro for the stitches to look a little bit uneven. That's because the hook Velcro actually makes the stitch look like it's not laying flat on top of the fabric. So that's normal. We'll be cutting a 5 64 inch leech line Dacron to size here so that we can use it to close the two ends of our cover. We've cut two pieces to 18 inches in length. She is not cutting on top of her finger, so don't do that. It looked like she was cutting on top of her finger. She was well away from the finger. A hot knife will definitely burn you. And then she creates that sleeve uh, by folding the fabric where she'd marked it earlier. Angela's also going to sew the leech line right in the middle here just to tack it down so that we don't lose it uh, when we're untying or retying the cover on top of the foam. And here she does the same thing to the opposite end. Now we'll take that split foam insulation for pipe and place it on top of our lifeline cable here. Then all we have to do is secure the cover on top of this. You'll notice how the cover is almost made perfectly to fit the foam and for a very snug fit. So Angela's just using that Velcro to close up the cover over top of the foam. At the ends of the cover, she'll use that leech line that runs through the sleeve and tie it shut. Slit foam insulation for pipe is usually less than $2 per every 6 foot, so that's a bargain. And to cover 16 feet of lifeline with this size foam insulation, you only need one yard of a 46 inch width Sombrella marine grade fabric. That's less than $20. Sombrella marine grade fabric is guaranteed to last 10 years from the mill. So if your foam wears out, all you need to do is replace it since it's so inexpensive. Here we're covering a rail on a push pit. This rail has a bend, and even with the bend, though there are a few wrinkles, it still looks great. If you're new to sewing, this is an easy and quick project that is very inexpensive. And even for those of you that are experienced, this is a wonderful addition to any boat. Here's a material list that we use to make this cover. Be sure to order all your supplies from Sailrite. For more free videos, be sure to check out sailrite.com or subscribe to the YouTube channel today. It's your loyal patronage to Sailrite that makes these free videos possible. Thanks for your support.